Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. For those new here, my name is Nikki and I post videos here on YouTube about reading, writing, editing and all the other things I love. And today it's the end of the month so I'm doing my reading wrap up for October. I've actually had another of the bumper reading months, there's quite a few books to get through so I am going to crack straight on. First of all I read Around the World in 575 Songs Volume 1 Europe by Nick Wall. Now there are four volumes in this collection and Nick Wall basically has gone on, uh, looking around the world and collecting traditional music from the various countries and he's sort of looking at um, what are the key aspects of some of their traditional music but also the social and political um, influences that have um, affected the traditional music whether its formation or how it's viewed and used nowadays. Uh, it was a fascinating piece I thought um, it had a lot to offer, there was a lot of information on, you know, countries like Moldova, I wouldn't have a clue about the traditional music, so um, I really enjoyed reading that, learning a little bit more. There's an accompanying website, and there's plenty of um, links to key songs that Nick has chosen, and also information on some other CDs and that you can check out. Um, I think it was a lovely resource for um, music lovers, traditional music lovers in particular, and I gave it five stars. Next up, Salvation by Peter F. Hamilton. Oh, if, forgive me, I should say that was a net galley read, the last one. And Salvation by Peter F. Hamilton is a book I received from the publisher in print copy as a review copy. Um, interestingly, it's not one I requested. Usually, if um, this publisher only sends me books that I've requested off their newsletter, but uh, this one just rocked up out of the blue. I'm not a big sci-fi reader. But I thought, well, I've received it, so I'll give it a try. In the end, I kind of hovered between three and a half and four stars for it. It's an interesting story. Um, basically, aliens have made contact with Earth and brought with them many technological and medical advances. However, um, the story is questioning whether um, they're really as benevolent as they seem. It's perhaps the best way to describe it. Um, the story takes place over several timelines, um, some earlier and some set quite a few years in the future and gradually during the course of the book which is reasonably hefty you know talking this sort of thickness we um, learn the truth about the aliens um, I believe there is going to be a sequel um, I'm not sure if it's a, a long series or if it's just one more book but it is going to continue and it was okay I mean I didn't dislike it the science now and again got a little bit heavy for me but not too much it was um, fairly easy reading for non-scientific people like me. Um, however, it just didn't thrill me. I wanted to be really gripped by the story and the things that were happening to the characters and I struggled with that. And I think it's because there were quite a few characters and we swapped and changed between them all the time and we weren't with any of them for long enough to really establish a great connection, I think was the issue. Uh, next up, Book Love by Debbie Tung. Um, this is a net galley read and I gave it five stars. This is basically a, a little book of cartoons um, all about books and bookish people. Um, so anyone who's a book lover would recognise themselves in some of these cartoons as the girl can't walk past a bookshop without going in or claiming she hasn't got any money and then comes out buying ten books. Um, so it was really super cute, um, adorable little cartoons for the book lover in your family or, or for yourself of course. Next up I read Dracul by um, Dakri Stoker and J.D. Barker and this I also gave five stars, another net galley read. So this is um, a sort of, not a retelling of Dracula, almost a bit of a prequel. Um, it's sort of outlining where did Bram Stoker first um, get the idea for Dracula and it turns out that according to this book it was from his own experiences with vampires and eventually meeting Dracula himself as part of that. Uh, I thought it was a really fun um, tale, a really fun idea, and um, very atmospheric writing as well, um, which was really enjoyable. I was definitely keen to keep turning the pages. Next up, I read a collection of speculative fiction by Mark Twain, another net galley read, and again, five stars. I thought this was a really fun, interesting collection of tales. I mean, Mark Twain, you just tend to think about Huckleberry Finn and um, Tom Sawyer and that, um, so this was something really different. I mean, he wrote a couple of really brilliant pieces on um, 
the idea of um, message crossing, which is something I experience sometimes. You know, you're thinking of someone, you're going to plan to write to them or give them a ring and suddenly they ring you. It's like a sort of weird um, silent communication that you know you want to speak to each other. Um, so there's a few fun stories along those lines. And it was definitely something a bit different that I wouldn't necessarily associate with Mark Twain, and yet they were really, um, as I said, um, quirky and amusing little tales. Next up I read What If It's Us by Becky Abatali and Adam Silvera, and this was also a net galley read. Um, I was really excited for this book because they are such both such big names in YA at the moment, so I thought it's going to have to be good, surely. But I could only bring myself to give it three and a half stars. And the problem was, um, was mostly the insta-love, I would say. I mean, these guys meet for a whole of two minutes in a post office and suddenly they're deeply in love. And, they, and they're hardly together, they spend ages finding each other, but their actual time together is, mini, is minimal, and yet they're absolutely deeply obsessed with each other. It didn't really feel natural to me. And it was in some ways just too cute. You know, sometimes you just wanted to roll your eyes. Um, you also wanted to roll your eyes at the stupidity of the characters at some point. It was really clear they weren't suited for each other. Um, but, you know, I don't want to say anything too much more and spoiler it, but um, it's not a traditional happy ending that you might expect. Uh, so it's, it's something a little bit different, but I think I just wanted a bit more out of it than I got. Next up, I read Evelina by Fanny Burney, so a classic. Um, this is one that I bought myself um, in print, and it was a five-star read for me. It's a kind of a coming-of-age tale set in late Georgian England, um, or the sort of late 18th century, um, George III era, and it's it's kind of a satire and a farce, um, while also you know, telling a serious story in some ways of, you know, this young woman's journey, she's a bit naive and she arrives in London society and everything goes wrong for her for quite a while before she eventually finds her happy ending. Um, really hilarious, so it really brought a smile to my face as I was reading. And next up, going back to Nick Galley for Gentleman Jack by Angela Stidele. And this was a four star read for me. It's a non-fiction piece and it's about the life of Anne Lister who is a woman in Georgian England who, uh, Georgian Regency, uh, so it was sort of 18, 1810s, 1820s or so, mostly stuff's taking place. And she is uh, a lesbian and she kept uh, diaries that detailed her many conquests and amorous adventures as well as her literal adventures because she also did a great deal of travelling, including to, you know, far flung places, Russia, Afghanistan, you know, um, all, sort, all over the place she went. So. Um, it was certainly really interesting, however, the writing style itself was a little bit dry and didn't always grip me, so I kind of found, found my mind wandering now and again, even though the facts that she was presenting were fascinating. And sticking with NetGalley for The Heavens by Sandra Newman. Um, this is four and a half stars for me. I thought it was a really fantastic premise. Um, basically, a, a guy and a girl meet, and the girl's a bit of a dreamer. and. She has these fantastical stories that she travels back to the past in her dreams, to um, Elizabethan England, essentially. Um, she meets William Shakespeare um, along the way. And whenever she does things in her dreams, when she wakes up, she has the impression that the world has changed, that something she's done in her dreams has changed the future. And she thinks that the world keeps getting worse and worse and worse, and she blames herself, um, wondering, like, what on earth is she going to ruin next time she goes back in time? Um, it was a brilliant premise, really interesting idea, um, quite thought provoking as well in a way, and so yeah, as I said, four and a half stars for that one. Next we have another net galley read, and it is In the Name of Magic by Chris Bidell. Um, this one I really struggled with, it, I could only give it two stars, and that was mostly because um, I liked the idea. Uh, it's a a fantasy story, or fantasy paranormal, I guess you'd say, um, and it's set in a time where there's people with magic and people without magic, and a, a new ruler has just taken the throne and is cracking down on the non-magical people. So there's a bit of a Harry Potter-esque muggles kind of feel about that in a way, um, and they're using police wolves to um, to police um, the state, which is a little bit Narnia-like, you know. Um, and it, as I said, it was a really interesting idea, but 
I just couldn't get into the writing at all. Um, the characters just didn't work and their interactions never felt real. It felt, the dialogue felt really stilted and and sometimes their reactions to things were just hilarious um, uh, and completely unbelievable. Excuse me. Um, one, for example, I'm about to do a spoiler, I don't usually like to do spoilers in this, but um, one instant, one, one of the characters' parents has just been murdered, quite viciously, brutally, brutally murdered all over the floor. And um, the character's reaction is, oh dear. And then a couple of pages later, she's worried about whether she should break up with her boyfriend. And, you know, there was just, there was no really deep sense of reaction. There's terrible things going on around these characters pretty much for the entire story. And yet they all just seem to go, yeah, well, whatever, and brush it all off. Um, so that just didn't work for me at all. Um, so that, that was probably the main thing that I just, it, just couldn't get into it because of that. Next up, uh, Toilers of the Sea by Victor Hugo. So this is another bought one. Um, five star read. Um, beautiful descriptions as ever. Um, I love Victor Hugo's descriptions. They're really atmospheric and so detailed and you really get a brilliant mental picture of the scene. And this was a really, um, a really beautiful story. Um, I love Gilead as a character. Of course, it's Victor Hugo, so there's not a happy ending. <laughs> when is there ever really a happy ending in Victor Hugo? I know Marius and Cosette get off okay at the end of Les Mis, but nobody else does really. Um, Cosimodo and Esmeralda don't exactly wander off into the sunset together either, and um, the, this one's no different. <laughs> Gilead does not get a happy ending, but um, I really loved following his efforts um, um, during the course of the story as he tries to rescue an engine from a um, shipwrecked vessel in order to win the hand of the shipowner's daughter. Uh, next up, we're going back to NetGalley. Dear, Dear George, Dear Mary by Mary Calvey. And this was three stars for me, and it's basically um, a fictional um, tale of George Washington and uh, Mary, who was a woman who he was apparently in love with, a bit of an unrequited love, and this is based on some letters, diaries and things like that, um, that uh, have been saved, and I wanted to like it more than I did, I mean it's a Georgian era historical romance essentially, even though it's an unrequited love kind of romance. So I, I wanted to really get into it, it's absolutely my era for historical fiction. But I couldn't quite connect with the characters and the main thing that kind of put me off as well was that the author seems to be attributing this relationship to George's hatred of the English and almost saying it was a part of the cause of the American Revolution, which doesn't really seem very logical to me. It completely ignores the socio-political aspects that were going on at the time that I think are probably the real cause of the revolution. Um, so a bit of a strange uh, thesis or hypothesis on that. Um, moving on, 200 Crochet Squares by Jan Eaton. Um, my mother treated me to this book because I told her I wanted to make a blanket. I've recently started crocheting, in case you haven't noticed that across some of my other social media. Picked it up in August. So I've um, been making a few different hats and bits and pieces and I wanted to do a blanket but I didn't like any of the square, the like square, granny square type designs that I had patterns for. So my mother bought me this book, it's a um, five star read for me, a really great resource. Um, the patterns are easy to follow, there's nice big pictures so you can see how the end result should look. Um, sometimes I feel a few of them are maybe uh, not as beautiful as I might wish. There were a few where I thought, well, I won't make that because it's kind of ugly. But um, there was, you know, as, if, as the title says, 200 of them. So there's plenty that I did like and that I can try uh, gradually over time. Next up, Escaping Solitude by Sarah Doby Bauer, which is another net galley. Uh, no, I lie, it's not a net galley read. Um, it was from the author who asked me if I would like to review because I read the first book on net galley. Uh, so this is an author arc. Um, Four stars for me. Um, escaping um, Exile, I think was the name of the first one from memory, which I enjoyed. It's a paranormal tale. There was a vampire who'd been trapped on a desert island and then a, a young man shipwrecked there and they have to, they kind of are drawn to each other romantically but they also have to fight together against the cannibals until they can eventually get off the island. So this book picks up where that one left off. They've arrived back in New Orleans and are dealing with um, the vampire's coven 
and um, trying to settle back into life. Um, however, they want to make um, the human into a vampire, and the only way to do that is to find one of the elders, one of the old vampires, who can do that for them. So by the end of the book, um, we're kind of setting off on a bit of a quest um, for that, which I believe there's going to be one more book, so I'm guessing that'll be our search for the elder and trying to tie everything up. So, um, yeah, four stars. It, it was an enjoyable continuation. In fact, I think I liked it a little bit more than the first story because we knew the characters now, so we were able to really get a bit more involved with them um, now that all those introductions were out of the way. Next up, another NetGalley lead, The Art of Doodle Words by Sarah Alberto. Four stars for me. And this is another a cute little book um, showing different ideas for designing doodles around word art, essentially. I mean, there wasn't much technical information, but it was certainly plenty of inspiration when you look at how she's gone about um, making her little designs. And next up, The Circus of the Damned by Cornelia Gray. Um, now this Deal with the Devil series of Cornelia Gray, there are three books, and I got them all at the same time, I bought them uh, just over a year ago. And I read the first one late last year, and I've had the other two sitting there for 12 months. And other stuff's just come in, like Nick Galley reads and stuff I've had to review by a certain time frame and it keeps getting pushed back and back so I finally decided I was going to finish these two remaining books off get rid of them before the end of the year so um, I don't look at them feeling guilty anymore so The Circus of the Gat Damned was a false start read for me I, although the books are a series they're not a, a linked series as such the character of the devil um, Fafarello he is in all of them but the other characters change and the plot changes so this one was set um, a magician's on the run and he gets invited to join the circus but they tell him at the time it means giving up his soul and staying there for life and he's quite drunk and he's in a panic and he doesn't believe them but then he wakes up and discovers he can't leave the circus and so um, that's the basic premise uh, I thought it was really fun premise I love the characters um, engaging writing so yeah a good read for stars next up figures of speech by Tim Cassidy and this is another net galley read and another four star one for me um, it's non-fiction and it's looking at the ideas of um, how language um, affects perception I guess in some ways um, in different time periods and um, oh, for instance one story of a girl who turned up in Georgian England and she was speaking a bizarre language that no one could understand and claimed to be a princess from what they could work out from her from a made up island or an, a, an island whose name they'd never heard of and the whole of the uh, investigation into her was based on trying to work out what language she was using. Like nobody bothered to think that she didn't look like she'd come from a <laughs> um, tropical island of any sort. She looked English. Um, but that was completely put aside because they kept testing her and she kept sticking to this language and no one could work out what it was. And eventually it was all revealed as a hoax, of course, but um, she was as English as they come. But um, language became the, the key thing to determining who she was and where she was from, I, I guess is the important point there. So this was a really fascinating read. A little bit dry on the prose at times, but it's probably one you'd only pick up if you're really interested in linguistics anyway. So we're drawing towards the end. Um, next up, Salt of the Earth by um, Joseph Whitlin. Um, and this is another net galley read. And it's five stars and it's a Polish um, author and this was supposed to have been the first book of I believe a trilogy but unfortunately the author never got to finish it um, so we only have this book and the beginning of the second one which was also included at the back of this um, this edition um, it's a really deep lyrical work um, set during the war it's very um, anti-war very pacifist um, message it's putting across um, I definitely really enjoyed uh, the main character and I, I'd be interested to see how things worked out for him it's a shame that we don't have the rest of the material to discover if he makes it through to the end or not but if you're into literary fiction um, then this is definitely worth checking out as I said five stars and another five star read was How to Play the Piano by James Rhodes now James Rhodes is someone I've been following on Twitter for a while um, I discovered him because of Benedict Cumberbatch because they're friends uh, he's a classical pianist and this is a book he's brought out um, which basically teaches someone to play the piano in the course of about six weeks um, to play one song 
and a prelude from the World Tempered Clavier. Um, and I really liked it. I thought it was a really interesting approach. The beginning of the book opens um, with an introduction to how to read music um, and what keys are which are on the piano for those who are complete novices. And then it goes looking at this piece. It's only a fairly short piece, two pages of music. And it um, addresses it bar by bar. And you learn, you learn a couple of bars, you practice those, and you learn the next couple. And I thought it was a really interesting idea because having learned the piano myself, you know, I spent ages doing scales and exercises. And I think it, it would be really um, motivating if you wanted to learn piano to be able to have a song that you can play that quickly which is what I liked about the approach. And I mean, James Rose doesn't pretend that you can now play the piano, you'd still have to go off after this and have lessons. But I think if you were trying to decide if it was the instrument for you, it'd be nice to feel that accomplishment of having been able to play something, and that would give you then the motivation to continue and have lessons and, and really learn to play properly. So I really liked that idea behind it. Next up, the Crochet Stitch Handbook by Betty Bernhard. Um, this is a net galley read, and I gave it four stars. I've been looking for a sort of stitch bible to go with my new crochet book collection so I was interested to see what this one was like and it's definitely a contender um there's a couple I'm looking at but I liked the layout of this one um it was very uh, easy to read in that in that those terms however some of the color choices for how they've done um the patterns um they were these really pale pastely colors which was a little bit hard on the eyes and I think you know particularly for an older person doing crochet it'd probably be a little bit hard to read and I think maybe they should have stuck with blacks or dark blues um, you know it's just something that really stood out from the page a little bit more but um, and I guess it depends who you are whether you'd have a problem with that but even I sort of was going like blinking at it a little bit now and then on the screen so I think it could cause a problem if it's like late at night and you're trying to look at the crochet look at that book trying to read the pattern but a great collection of different stitches, so uh, I guess you kind of have a bit of a toss up. But I gave it four stars because I thought it had some excellent material, it's just um, some of the design choices maybe could have been a little bit better. Uh, next, I read a book, Art Studio Faces and Features. Uh, this I gave five stars, it's a, just a guide to drawing faces, and it does so across, or um, well, I say drawing, but um, perhaps I should say creating faces because it covers all the mediums, um, pencil of course, but also uh, you know acrylic, um, watercolour, and there's some beautiful um, instructions, there's general instructions on anatomy in that first, then it goes into detail on the different media, and with some wonderful uh, example pictures of the sort of effects you can create. So for an artist, um, definitely a great overview of doing portraits. Sticking uh, with the drawing side of things for another net galley one. Um, did I say that last one was net galley? It was in case I forgot to mention it. Uh, the next one, again net galley, is uh, Drawing Basic Textures in Pencil um, by Kadachi, Powell and Stacey. And this is another five star read. This is a very tiny little book. I think it was about 40 pages from memory. Uh, but some really lovely tips. Um, the ones that particularly interest me are stuff on um, drawing hair and fur and things like that because in my own drawing, it's the hair I tend to struggle with, and I think I approach it completely wrong, um, looking at what I've read in these last two books. So the next time I do a portrait, I will try um, some of the techniques they suggest and see if I get on better with it that way. And next up, we're sticking with net galley still. It's been a bit of a net galley month, but I, I had a little bit of a build-up of several that I got approved for all at once, so I needed to clear the pile a bit with them. So uh, next up was The Unhappiness of Being a Single Man by Franz Kafka. And this is a collection of Kafka's short stories. Uh, I gave it five stars. Um, it was a really eclectic mix. Uh, some I liked more than others, of course, as is always the case in a short story collection. But they were certainly all fascinating. And if you're a fan of Kafka's longer works, I would definitely check these out. Um, There's some really brilliant, um, fun little ideas in there. And next up, Rome by Der Schwartz. And this was three stars. Um, Again, it was a really great premise. Um, we have a, a young man who ends up going to work for a guy who is essentially a monster hunter. Uh, and the young man, um, Rome, that's his surname, he has a sort of power it's to do with dreaming and being able to move between different planes. And his, I think the problem I had with this book was really his relationship um, 
because again it was there was quite a lot of insta love going on there was no real getting to know each other and falling for each other it was like the second they saw each other suddenly they were desperately in love um which i think i found problematic and there was also a little bit of an issue with um things like addiction like our, our monster hunter is addicted to what's really fairly violent sex with a vampire and as soon as he meets Rome he just decides that he's going to give him give up the vampire and stop and yet he's described it to Rome as an addiction and yet as soon as he says oh, I'm not going to do it anymore he's like oh yeah I'm fine now and that that didn't feel realistic to me I was like if it really is an addiction it's going to take a lot more a lot harder work for him to break it than just deciding he's going to um, so yeah, a, a good premise, a good idea, but I just felt that some of the execution wasn't quite spot on. And the last book for the month, we're there! Um, a Dance of Water and Air by Antonia Aquilenti, another net galley read. Uh, Rome was too, did I say that? I can't recall. And uh, this one's a five star read though. It's a fantasy story um, of a prince from a kingdom. He's um, all the um, royals have some kind of affiliation uh, with an element so um, our hero uh, is water and he's going off to a kingdom of of air essentially uh, to marry the princess there for a strategic political alliance and the only trouble is when he gets there he finds that he's more attracted to her brother and there's a lot of plotting and intrigue going on at the court as well so I, I really enjoyed it. It was a really fun, wonderful story, great characters, um, and in this case, you know, a nicely um, developed relationship. It wasn't insta love. They kind of had a bit of an initial attraction, but they got to know each other before they really fell for each other, spending time together on shared interests and things. So uh, there's going to be more of these books. The story's going to continue, so I will definitely want to read that and see how things work out for them. So that's it. A bumper month, as I said. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Um, all the details of the books again and a note of the names and authors will be below. And I will be back at the end of November to tell you what I've been reading over those weeks. Bye for now everyone.